Well, federal criminal defendant Donald J. Trump has a question tonight for President Biden, the Department of Justice, and Special Prosecutor Jack Smith. On social media tonight, Donald Trump asked, when are they going to drop all charges against me, apologize, and return everything that was illegally taken from my home? The short answer is, of course, never. First of all, President Biden had nothing to do with the federal indictment Donald Trump faces now, which includes violations of the Espionage Act. The attorney general specifically removed the normal Department of Justice decision-making structure from the case and left it to independent special counsel Jack Smith, who is never going to drop these charges or apologize to Donald Trump or return everything that the FBI seized from Donald Trump's Florida residence with a search warrant on August 8th of last year, none of which was seized illegally. Donald Trump was subjected to a carefully crafted legal search and seizure of government documents that Donald Trump was hiding from the federal government's pursuit of those documents, year and a half pursuit of those documents. Donald Trump is making it very clear what he will demand of his next attorney general if he is returned to the presidency. The next Trump attorney general would be forced to drop all charges against Donald Trump, have the Justice Department formally apologize to Donald Trump, and he, Donald Trump will require his attorney general to return to him everything that was taken with that search warrant. Donald Trump's next attorney general would no doubt demand a pardon for himself or herself for every crime the attorney general commits for Donald Trump. That's the kind of madness that would run rampant in another Trump administration. Donald Trump tells the lie that President Biden has weaponized the Justice Department by ordering the Justice Department to indict Donald Trump, which is, of course, untrue. President Biden has never done and would never do that. But after condemning that conduct, Donald Trump says that is exactly what he plans to do. I will appoint a real special prosecutor to go after the most corrupt president in the history of the United States of America, Joe Biden. So there's Donald Trump promising to weaponize the Justice Department against his political opponents if he is restored to the presidency. Joe, Joe Biden has never appointed a special prosecutor. Jack Smith was appointed by Attorney General Merrick Garland without ever consulting the president. Donald Trump promises to appoint special prosecutors himself if he is president. Donald Trump will be choosing the special prosecutors. The United States and the world have much to fear in a second Trump presidency. And I don't mean to ever stoke that fear on this program because I strongly believe that if Donald Trump is the Republican candidate for president in the next election, Joe Biden will beat him by an even greater margin than he beat him before. I mentioned Donald Trump's demented dream of appointing a special prosecutor to go after Joe Biden merely to illustrate how much Donald Trump has to say about the federal criminal case against him that is not actually about the federal criminal case against him. It can be fairly, fairly taken as an indicator of just how hopelessly guilty Donald Trump thinks he is, that he says so little about the actual evidence in the case and instead turns his comments about being the first federally prosecuted former president of the United States into a fantasy for his weakest minded followers that will generate campaign contributions from them to restore Donald Trump to the presidency to carry out their fantasy. Because Donald Trump and his lawyers cannot come up with one word of legitimate sounding legal defense to the charges against Donald Trump you can expect Donald Trump to continue to make utterly empty statements and accusations that have absolutely nothing to do with whether he is guilty or not guilty of the espionage charges that he now faces. As of tonight, the case of the United States of America versus Donald J. Trump and Waltine Nauta is moving along briskly with an order issued 
by Judge Aileen Mercedes Cannon, who shows no signs of possibly recusing herself. That order today says, on or before June 16th, 2023, which is tomorrow, all attorneys of record and forthcoming att attorneys of record shall contact the litigation security group of the U.S. Department of Justice if they have not done so already to expedite the necessary clearance process for all team members anticipated to participate in this matter and thereafter file a notice of compliance no later than June 20th, 2023. Delay is Donald Trump's friend in this case, and Judge Cannon has shown herself to be Donald Trump's legal very best friend in her previous judicial interference in the investigation that led to this criminal case. And so it is good news tonight that Judge Cannon has given the lawyers days instead of weeks to rush the security clearance process for the criminal defense lawyers in the case. In Donald Trump's question tonight about when are they going to return everything that was taken from my home, Donald Trump comes once again very close to admitting to the crimes that he is charged with. That question is a public de de declaration by inference that Donald Trump knew that he had classified documents in his home and that he wants to continue to illegally possess them. So it is now a consistent pattern with Donald Trump that whenever he makes the slightest reference to the evidence in the case, he in some way, by implication at least, and sometimes very directly, confesses to the crimes that he has been charged with. Tonight's social media post by Donald Trump is an echo of what former federal prosecutor Andrew Weissman called a confession on this program when he heard Donald Trump Say this. I had every right to have these documents. That was Tuesday night. That was after he was arraigned for p illegally possessing those documents. Some of the things like that Donald Trump says publicly, like that, that Donald Trump says publicly, can and will be used against him in this trial. And so, as we proceed through this year of defendant Trump and next year of defendant Trump and possibly through the appeals process to come, many possible years of criminal defendant Trump, it is best to remain mindful of the fact that every time Donald Trump says the slightest thing, no matter how untrue about the evidence in any of the criminal cases against him, that is a very good day for the prosecutors of Donald Trump, who just want him to continue to hand them statements that can and will be used against him. The New York Times is reporting tonight how the beautiful mind boxes were born. That was the term the White House staff used to describe Donald Trump's personal assembly of cardboard boxes that he moved back and forth from the West Wing of the White House to the residents of the White House and then finally to Florida. The New York Times tonight explains why the staff called those boxes the beautiful mind boxes. It was a reference to the title of a book and movie depicting the life of John F. Nash Jr., the mathematician with schizophrenia, played in the film by Russell Crowe, who covered his office with newspaper clippings, believing they held a Russian code he needed to crack. And so in this context, beautiful mind is the Trump staff way of saying that Donald Trump's handling of those boxes was inexplicably crazy. The Times reports he could point to specific boxes that he wanted to take with him on Air Force One when he was traveling and declined to take others, appearing aware of the contents inside the boxes he chose. Mr. Trump repeatedly told advisors the boxes of documents were mine, according to several people familiar with his remarks. With the Trump staff calling them the beautiful mind boxes, the question of Donald Trump's peculiar and highly risky attachment to the boxes seemed worthy of a psychiatric opinion. And so on this program last night, I asked former Harvard Medical School assistant professor of psychiatry, Dr. Lance Dotis, for a psychiatric explanation.
is there a psychiatric explanation for why he kept these documents after the federal government demanded them, sent a subpoena for them, after he was told by lawyers he had to give them back? My guess would be that it makes him greater in his own mind. Now he has secret documents, which he had when he was president. But if he loses the presidency, at least he has the secret documents. It's like having a badge, you know, when you're four years old that says you're a, 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 a secret policeman. I think it's something like that. He needs it for himself.